All right, welcome back. So we are now going to keep moving along and we're moving on to the arthropod. So as I mentioned, this group is quite diverse and they totally earn their own lectures. So let me go to our normal overview. So this is going to be the most successful clade of all animals on the planet. It's going to have the most number of species. Um, you're going to see so much diversity with them. With them. So they're going to be these coelomate organisms. And one thing that you're going to see with them is they're going to have this chitinous exoskeleton. So remember, chitin is made up of sugar molecules, and it provides that like kind of like armor for the outside of them. And we're going to start to see these jointed appendages that they use for multiple things. Um, these go through um, process of molting, follow um, exodius, exodius, I'm probably saying that wrong. And what's really unique, um, as I mentioned, they are kind of over here with the roundworms, but I wanted to put them on their own lecture so the other one didn't get too long. So let's talk about them a little bit. So when you think about these guys, it's quite diverse when you kind of break it up into them. So it's going to be your most diverse and abundant species. And of all the animal kingdoms, 85% of them fall within this phylum right here. About one third of them are just made up of beetles. Uh, I don't know what it is about beetles, but they have figured it out. So, which is quite interesting for every mammal, you know, for just, you know, human species, there's about 60 beetle species. Well, they outnumber us like crazy. And there's so much that we still haven't discovered. There's estimated about 30 million species that we have yet to discover or classify. Now, what makes these guys so unique? Well, they have that exoskeleton, which is made up of chitin. They have a true coelom. We're going to start to see those jointed limbs, and then the body is going to be segmented. Now, these survive in various uh, habitats, so you can see them in terrestrial, aquatic environments, and also up in the air. So let's go on a little bit about the physiology and break it up in just a little bit. So we're going to start to see the segment of body. So we're going to break it up into different regions. And depending on the type, you might see some regions fused together. Now, each segment is going to have a pair of flexible jointed appendages. So it's going to be like small little parts all joined together. Now, we go through this process called tegmosis, where we're going to have these blocks of segments that are grouped together and they're going to become um, specialized. Some of them are going to be fused together, as I just mentioned, or some are going to remain individual segments. <laughs> now, there are different options, but the three main ones you're going to see is you're going to see a head, a thorax, or an abdomen, if you break it up into three. Now, some of them are going to have what's called a cephalothorax, where they kind of fuse these two together and have an abdomen on its own, and then some will just have a head and then a trunk region. It depends on the type of organism. Um, we're going to go through some subphyla, and you'll see so much diversity within this group right here. Now, they do have that exoskeleton, which is made up of chitin. Think of it as like an armored plating. It's also where the muscles like to attach. Now, as I mentioned, they have these jointed appendages, and they are have so many various functions for depending on the type of organism. Some are for um, helping them like get prey. Um, other things are just for movement. There's all kinds of different things that they use these jointed appendages for. So a little bit about their physiology. Now we're starting to get more active, so that means we're going to need more oxygen. Now, if you're an aquatic species, you're going to start to use gills to go through and go through and exchange carbon dioxide for oxygen. Now, for our terrestrial ones, the chelicerates are going to use what we call book lungs, which you'll see later on. Uh, mostly in your spiders are going to fall into this, which pretty much when I say book lung, they're just like stacks of little air pockets. Now, when we get to those, we start to see that we're going to start to see some like internal food, like the blood almost. For this group, it's called hemolymph. It's a circulatory fluid that's going to carry respiratory pigments and facilitate up oxygen transport. So if you look at this little B right here, <coughs> you're going to start to see more and more of a network starting to happen. And you're going to start to see more of a primitive circulatory system 
is starting to happen. It's actually called an open circular system. It's where the hemolymph is actually sprayed all over all the internal organisms instead of traveling in vessels like we have. So we have all our blood that is kept in our nerves and veins and arteries, goes to our heart and all the other stuff. With these guys, an open circulatory system, that hemolymph is sprayed all over them. They don't have like these two arteries and veins. The blood, or there it's called, their hemolymph actually bathes the organs in oxygen and removes the waste. So it's more like an open, hot mess if you want to think of it that way. Now they do have that trachea network where they're going to have these spiracles, which are openings to the outside, right here, shown in these little blue dots right here. But it's just when you appreciate we're starting to get more complex when it comes to internal systems. And when we start talking about physiology in the next chapter, we'll talk mostly about, you know, human uh, respiratory systems. But as we start to get more and more complex with the animal kingdoms, you can kind of start to appreciate and see how we got to where we are, especially when it comes to human development. So how do we go through and classify all this? Um, we're going to break it up into some subphyla, and I'm going to hit on most of them, I think. I'm looking right there. And now we're going to hit on these four on the bottom. And now one phylum is extinct. This is our trilobites. Um, you can actually see those as fossils. But in each of these subphyla, we'll hit on each of them. You can see several other subspecies in between them. So makes you appreciate how diverse each of these groups are. So your first one is subphyla chislicerata. Um, these give me so much heebie-jeebies. Uh, probably my least favorite when you think about it. So within this group, you have your spiders, your scorpions, your horseshoe crabs, your sea spiders, and your mites. I hate these guys. I really do. Um, they have two tecmata. So that means they have those two groups. They're going to have what's called the cephalothorax. The head and the thorax are going to be fused together with the eight legs on top of it and then their true abdomen region. Now, what's unique about these guys is they have this chelicerate mouth part. So these claw-like or fang-like mouth parts, which are kind of shown right here, so those little fangs that they use. And they use them to pierce their prey and insert their digestive juices. Now, most of the time, you'll find these on a terrestrial. I grew up in the country, and I saw scorpions all the time, so I hate them. But you can also find them in the freshwater and some in marine species. Now, they do have, as I mentioned, we're getting more and more complex nervous systems. They do have a brain with two ventral nerve cords, and we'll see both male and females. So they use both internal and external fertilization. And about 77,000 species, 70,000. 77,000 too many in my opinion, but you might love these and you can pick one as your favorite invertebrate. I'm not stopping you. Next is subphylum Myripoda. These are going to be your centipedes and millipedes. So they have two tegmata. So they're going to have the head, which are going to have your antenna and their little simple eyes, cute, and their mandibles. And then this elongated abdomen with many segments, many legs. Depending if your centipede or millipede will determine how many segments of legs, pairs of legs you have per segment. Centipedes only one. These are the bad ones. They have one that bites. Millipedes have two. Friendly. Mean. Nice. We had these happen a lot too in the country. Gosh. I was terrorized as a kid. So all of them are going to be found in terrestrial environments. They love humid environments. Now they are both predators and herbivores. The predators are going to be most of your centipedes. Your millipedes are going to be your herbivores. And they have a lot of legs. Just appreciate that. About 16,000 species fall within this subphylum. Probably one of my favorite and the tastiest of all the, of them is the Phyla crustacea. So here you have your shrimps, your lobsters, your crab, your crayfish. They all fall into this one. Now you're going to have three tagmata, so you're going to have a true head, and that's going to have your antenna and some mandibles. Boom, boom. You're going to have a thorax that's going to have the legs for walking, and then an abdomen, which you're going to have these little things called swimmers that they use for, of course, swimming. Now, some of them, there are going to fuse their head and thorax together to make a cephalothorax, depending, you know, which group you're going right here. Now, they do have that exoskeleton, but most of the time you're going to find these in marine environments, and they utilize calcium carbonate to make it super, super strong. Um, you'll see mostly separate sexes within this group, and a lot of them are going to be carnivorous. 
And as I mentioned, most of them are going to be aquatic, some terrestrial, and about 70,000 marine species alone. So the tastiest and probably my favorite group of this one right here. And then finally, subphylohexapoda, which is all the insects. And I could probably spend a whole nother lecture just talking about insects, but we're going to keep it simple. We have three tagmata, so you have your head and your true thorax and then abdomen. Now with these guys, they're going to have three pairs of jointed legs. So you have this beautiful walking stick right here. And um, some of them, if they do have wings, it will be on the thorax region. Now look at that number, 800,000 species. This is where the meat of the group is going to be. You're going to find the most in this subphyla right there. And they will go through that process of complete and incomplete metamorphosis, depending on the type it is. Um, I took entomology as an elective in my undergrad and for animal science, and I had so much fun. I had to do a bug collection. I had to get over some of my fears of touching these guys, but there is so much diversity, and you should really appreciate how complex the insects are. And if you want to know more about them, just let me know, and I can direct you in the right direction. So I don't want to ramble on, but here are some review, most of the cool videos that talk about this phylum alone. Some of them are talking like one of them is like super cool bugs, and you know you might find some ideas for your favorite invertebrate in this group. And then um, credit for my slides. <laughs>